dumbass. <laughs>Yes, I mean, if you talk to Alex for any length of time, you discover all kinds of things that you didn't know about the world. We've blown it wide open. Um, you have. You have absolutely blown it wide open. But it leaves me with a huge question for you, Alex. And it's really, you have uncovered the new world order, which is deadly. It's full of what you call people who are criminals. Well, this is what I'm coming to. It's full of criminals, etc., who seek to run the world and will kill anybody who gets in their way. And you are almost, or have been, a lone crusader powering against them. No, that's so, how come, how, am I alive? How, how are you still alive? How are you still alive? How are you still alive? Why am I alive? Well, no, which, is the yeah. listen, listen, am I alive? which is the explanation? One, they don't exist. Or two, you're part of the conspiracy. No, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. In fact, that's how I pitched it to the networks, exactly. I said, uh, <laughs> I'd like to do a show where I rid the world of all these fevered egos that are tainting our collective unconscious. And the guy at CBS said, will there be <laughs> And uh, I said, sure, I don't know, sure. <laughs> Boom, a check falls in my lap, and uh, I'm a producer. I never knew it was that easy. All these years, I've been trying to write scripts and characters and plots and stories that had meaning. Will there be Sure. Boom. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm a producer now. Where have you been all our life, boy? We've been looking for you in Hollywood. In an article at Pennsylvania.com titled Forensic Odontology, Missing and Unidentified Persons, it states, Dental records have been used for over 200 years in this country for the identification of deceased. The teeth are uniquely qualified for identification in many ways, but especially since they are virtually impossible to destroy. They survive fire, decomposition, and submersion in water or earth for many years. This survivability and the fact that most persons have dental records is the key to the success of dental records for the identification of deceased. Even now, with many persons having no dental restorations, the teeth and their surrounding structures provide a myriad of distinct characteristics useful in identification. For the next images, we will be paying special attention to the distinct characteristics of the two top central incisors, the bottom right cuspid, and the bottom right lateral incisor as seen in this diagram.
In this first image, we have red arrows pointing to the two top central incisors. We can clearly see the noticeable trademark gap in between the incisors. There was some dental work done to shave them down slightly in order to give a slightly different appearance, but there was no work done to diminish the gap. In the second image, we direct our attention to the bottom right cuspid. In both images, the cuspid protrudes significantly, which causes the bottom right lip to slightly protrude and droop in both images. The image on the left is a little more pronounced because the heavier bottom lip was reduced in size during plastic surgery, and we can clearly see that in the image on the right, the bottom right cuspid has been ever so slightly shaved down. In this last image, we can see that the right lateral incisor sets behind both the bottom right cuspid as well as the bottom right central incisor. Though the appearance of the teeth have been altered slightly through shaving them down, the individual crookedness and displacement of the teeth have remained the same. Next, let's take a look at some other irrefutable forensic evidence into the true identity of Alex Jones. Bill Hicks had many moles, but the most defined mole that he had was below his jaw on the left side of his neck. In the image on the left, you can see where the large mole was located on Bill Hicks. And on the image on the right, you can clearly see a scar where that same mole had been removed. Most of Bill Hicks' moles were removed during plastic surgery. But if you look closely, you will find either scars blemishes or smaller freckles that were not removed because they were small and more likely to go unnoticed. There is absolutely no doubt that Bill Hicks knowingly, intentionally, and willfully became a fraud and deceiver of the nations. He willingly chose to become the controlled opposition of the One World Government. He has full knowledge that he only reveals the partial truths to his audience in order to keep them distracted from what the One World Government is really up to. Their plans, their deceptions, and their crimes are fully revealed at TestimonyOfTheTwoWitnesses.com. But the forensic evidence does not end with just teeth, moles, marks, like mindsets and actions. The most damaging evidence to prove that the Alex Jones you know today is not who he says he is. There was another Alex Jones. He was the Alex Jones who was replaced by Agent Bill Hicks. Pay very close attention to the video clips that you are about to watch. We're sick and tired of it. We, we stand for this country and we will defend it. The United Nations is a tyrannical, authoritarian, propaganda arm and military arm of international control. Well, you know, I'm mad at myself, and I've said it before, because I do a half-assed job. People say I do a good job on my TV and radio show, and tell you the truth, I don't. I, this is such a war, I should be devoted to this 12 hours a day. In my arms. Yeah, that's Alex Jones, baby. All right, we're talking about some serious issues today. We're talking about how they got us divided. It should not be front page news that Fuzzy Zeller said something racist, even though he's an old, fat racist. Who cares about an old, fat racist that says something about an awesome man, Asian, African American, who's worth probably $100 million? Who cares about words? We're Americans. We're all together in this boat. The man with the plan is here, Jeff Davis. What do you have to say? Just like you said, Alex, keep the small fish in turmoil so the big fish can rob and rule over. That's, that's it. That's the game plan. That's it. All of the images that you're about to see came from the videos that you have just viewed, all of which were created in 1997. The image on the left was taken from a video produced on April 24th, 1997. In it, we see a man who appears to be in his mid-twenties. 
The image on the right was also taken from a video produced in 1997. In it we see a man who appears to be much older with a completely different nose, different colored hair, and not nearly as lean and physically fit as the individual on the left. His neck is much thicker, as in chubbier, and his overall skull structure appears noticeably different. It is important to note that the individual on the left has a much more prominent brow ridge and well-defined cheekbones. Again, we have a much younger and leaner individual on the left and an older, thicker individual on the right. Looking at their necks, we see the individual on the left has well-defined neck muscles and a well-defined jawline. The individual on the right does not have well-defined neck muscles or jawline. Also, we have a much clearer image of the hairline, and the individual on the left actually appears to have a noticeably different hairline than the one on the right. The eyebrows and hair are also noticeably different in color, thickness, and texture. Again, we have two completely different individuals. The body builds are completely different, as well as a completely different facial structure. The individual on the right has much darker hair, especially considering that the image was taken outside. The individual on the left is very lean and muscular, and the one on the right, while he may have some muscle build, he is far from lean. It is important to note that at this time, in 1997, Jones would have only been 23 years old. While Bill Hicks spent a lot of time practicing and imitating the person of Alex Jones, certain genetic features were missed during the plastic surgery. So what happened to the first Alex Jones? Was he taken out by the CIA and replaced by Agent Bill Hicks? Was he paid off to disappear and then be replaced by Agent Bill Hicks? Or was the first Alex Jones also a CIA agent, and for whatever reason, he was unable to fulfill his current assignment, so he needed to be replaced? While it is unclear who the first Alex Jones really was or what happened to him, what is clear is that there was a replacement. A replacement who had begun his career as a comedian and is now an actor in a reality show of false hope. He is a quite convincing actor. His true identity is William Melvin Hicks. Did you see that? Did everyone see that? It is important for the viewer of this video to know that Bill Hicks is 12 years older than what his character, Alex Jones, claims to be. That being said, let's play a little game. How, How old, old is, is that I? man? Thirty or forty-two? Thirty-two or forty-four? Thirty-five or forty-seven? Thirty-nine or fifty-one? Going from a comedian to a journalist was not a difficult transition for Bill Hicks. He had already begun his new journalism career when he went to Waco. Today is day seven outside the compound of the Mount called Mount Carmel of the Branch Davidian uh, breakaway group of the Latter-day Saint Seven-day Adventist uh, group Yahweh Division. Back to you, Tom. But more than that, Bill Hicks was given a specific role to play, a role that he had also incorporated into his comedy. My friends, the information that you are about to witness from all of my years of research is the most important. It's been hidden in plain view the entire time. This is the ultimate secret, and it's about to be exposed. You know what Bill's doing? 
He's going for that anti-marketing dollar. That's a good market. He's very smart. <laughs> They're already ready for us. If we don't play ball, they'll just turn the economy off. Well, here, we'll just turn you off politically, knowing you're behind it. Because this only works, you kleptocratic con men scum, if no one knows that you didn't do it. Oh, you know what Bill's doing now? He's going for the righteous indignation dollar. That's a big dollar. A lot of people are feeling that indignation. We've done research. Huge market. He's doing a good thing. You've got to get mad. You've got to get angry. You've got to find your humanity. And you've got to start kicking some New World Order ass in the info war. Ooh, the anger dollar. Huge. <laughs> Huge in times of recession. Giant market. Bill's very bright to do that. There are a lot of people out there that are literally drinking Kool-Aid with lead, mercury, and arsenic in it under the direction of a charismatic leader with the last name of Jones, who also for quite some time claimed that you could make a million dollars a year if you were to convince other people to drink the Kool-Aid as well. No, I'm not talking about Jim Jones from Jonestown in Guyana. I'm talking about Alex Jones from Infowars.com and his Beyond Tangy Tangerine. What'd you do tonight, honey? Oh, we made, uh, we made uh, arsenic uh, childhood food now. Good night. <laughs> Did you see that? Did everyone see that? As you have just heard in Bill Hicks' stand-up routine, he is very familiar with how marketing is used to manipulate and deceive the general population. Those very tactics are the same tactics that he uses to deceive the awakening public. As seen earlier in the video, Bill Hicks uses real-world events and situations in his comedy routines. Bill Hicks was well aware of what his future role as a producer would entail, as he often spoke of it to his audience under the guise of comedy. He knew exactly what he was doing when he became Alex Jones. Once the public began to eat up the partial truths that Bill Hicks was feeding them under his disguise of Alex Jones, he desperately needed a cover story to conceal the large government paycheck that he was collecting. He needed a cover story that people would buy as to why he had so much money. Buy? Yes, buy. He first began by collecting a group of sponsors to plug and sell their products on his show in order to create the illusion that it is his viewers that keep the Infowars up and running. But Bill Hicks did not stop there. He rapidly began to produce his own line of products to sell, such as his Survival Shield Iodine, Super Male and Female Vitality, as well as a line of gimmicks such as belt buckles, t-shirts, and more. We are currently living in the worst recession in history. That being said, who has extra money to spend on such products? Hardly anyone who follows and listens to Infowars has extra money to splurge on such products. And why is that? because the controlled opposition is specifically designed to target the lower middle class of the American population. It is this lower middle class of people who flock to Infowars and eat up the partial truths as to how and why their government is keeping them in a state of poverty. Bill Hicks does a very good job at presenting the illusion that his products are rapidly selling. But we, those are almost sold out. One is nickel, silver nickel, plated, pure bronze, made in the USA. <clears throat> those are almost completely sold out. We've got some of the straight bronze ones left that I think are just as good. But we've got 500 of each of the new Molon Labe. And when they're gone, they're collectors, that's it. And these will sell out quickly. They're $45. He uses common marketing statements in order to make the viewer believe that there are only a few products left in stock and that he is really trying to get more. This, this, look, listen. We're going to keep selling the Survival Shield. It's excellent, the regular. Uh, and it's great for kids and things because it's not as strong as this. And i got to be honest, folks, we can't even keep enough of this in. We have all heard similar statements, especially in regards to his snake oil products. 
InfoWars has rapidly become nothing more than a very long infomercial. The most telling way to determine whether or not somebody is controlled opposition is by listening to how the facts are presented. Some facts may only be partially presented and then some are completely hidden. Often there are blatant lies presented to the unsuspecting public in order to create a specific reaction. The war in Chechnya is raging in Rosny with well reports of hundreds of thousands dying. Uh, 20 to 40,000 civilians trapped in the city. Russian hinds are being shot down. Tanks are being blown to bits. Uh, massive, uh, grod, unguided rocket attacks are being launched on the city indiscriminately right now. Air and artillery bombardments as well. Uh, it's absolutely out of control. It is pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll give you the news first on Y2K. The newest developments, the Pennsylvania nuclear plant has been shut down. Um, one of the main uh, systems transferring the power from it uh, failed but they say it's not a Y2K problem. And the things I'm experiencing here in Austin, Texas, the shelves are empty of water and some gas stations are running out of fuel. But also, another way to discern a controlled opposition is when you see the person completely change their opinion, story, or recant a previous statement. In fact, it was one particular moment that encouraged us to take a closer look into Alex Jones, and it was then that we discovered who he really was. I want you to realize I'm not making this stuff up. In fact, I shouldn't even quasi-joke around about Michelle being a tranny. That was wrong. And not that they even attack me for it. The end justifies the means. I just get real cynical in a bad mood sometimes and make sick jokes out of things. But Bill Hicks was not joking. He was very serious and quite troubled by the revelation of Michelle Obama's true gender. It was obvious that he did not know the truth about this until he saw the video, irrefutable proof that Michelle Obama is a man. Bill Hicks believed that he knew everything, but he completely fell apart on his live broadcast when the revelation of Michelle Obama's true gender became too much for him to contain. And she always wears these weird fluffy things around her waist. And her shoulders are uh, wide enough to put three men's heads on. And, of course, you know the classic thing of a male. You could have three heads on a male's shoulders and only another head on a woman's shoulder or one half of a head on each side. That's a well-known thing in anatomy. And I saw an online video that I may air today, and we may look into this, uh, talking about Michelle Obama looking like a man and how they only release photos of her with her hands up, covering her shoulders, or her turned at an angle. And I started looking at it with Joan Rivers saying she's a transvestite. And I'd been hearing this for years, and I thought, come on. I know Obama was raised by a transvestite and the rest of it, and I'm not getting into bashing people. That's not my cup of tea. But I started to really, last night, look at videos of this and look at photos of her in the official White House photo. And she looks like an NBA center. I mean, she looks more like Shaquille O'Neal than a black woman. The mistake that Bill Hicks made was that he did not check with his CIA handlers before broadcasting his discovery. He even went as far as presenting a special report about Michelle Obama's true gender. Well, you never know what to expect on the Alex Jones Show. And this morning, the topic came up that Michelle Obama might be a man. I know that might sound ridiculous, but is it? Uh, after all, there are many questions surrounding the president's past, and now people are starting to question the sexual orientation of the First Lady. Alex Jones has a special report on that from our new television studio in Austin, Texas. But first, here's what Joan Rivers had to say to kick the controversy into the mainstream. You know Michelle is a trend. I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh, my gosh. Well, Joan Rivers talked about it in the last few days, and it's a big international news story. The question is, who is Michelle Obama? Is she really a woman? Is she a man? Every time I look at Michelle or Michael Obama, uh, the first lady or the first tranny, every time I look at them, 
something doesn't look right. She doesn't look like any black woman or any woman I've ever known. She's got shoulders that are wider than a man's, which physiologically doesn't happen. Again, you can put three heads on a man's shoulders and only two heads on a woman's shoulders. That's a known anatomy. And then women generally have wider hips than, than men do. And you look at her arms and the rest of it, when she's standing straight on, she looks like no woman I have ever seen, except for people who have had different chromosomal disorders who choose to be a woman. And I've got the statistics and the numbers right here in front of me. We're seeing more and more of these chromosomal disorders because of all the toxic waste and GMO that's been introduced. One of them is the Klinefelter syndrome or the double XY, where you basically are part female, part male, and then generally around puberty or even younger, uh, the person needs to choose who they're going to be. But Joan Rivers, obviously, while, while officiating at a gay wedding, uh, was basically asked about if America would accept this. And, and, you know, she said, well, we already have a gay president and his, and his transvestite uh, uh, wife. You know, for me, this isn't really a laughing matter because not just the sexuality, but the very genetics of the human species across the board is being manipulated. Bill Hicks even goes as far as throwing a red herring into his spill about Michelle Obama's true gender by suggesting, even in the special report, that Michelle Obama may have Kleinfelter syndrome. Unfortunately for Bill Hicks, his theory has failed him as Michelle Obama has no symptoms of this genetic disorder. But since Bill Hicks really isn't a true journalist, we are not surprised that he didn't do any research into Kleinfelter syndrome. The treatment for Kleinfelter syndrome is hormone therapy by increasing the amount of testosterone because it is testosterone that the man lacks, which causes a male to have more feminine features. It was certainly not Michelle Obama's feminine features that led to the production of irrefutable proof that Michelle Obama is a man. But even if he suggested that Michelle Obama had a female form of Kleinfelter syndrome, which is called Turner syndrome, we would have found fallacies in that theory as well. While Kleinfelter syndrome causes a man to be tall of stature with feminine features, Turner syndrome causes a woman to be very short of stature with masculine features, and in either case, it would cause infertility. It was then that he was contacted and told to completely recant everything. It wasn't long after making this statement that Joan Rivers had died under suspicious circumstances. And so, what does Bill Hicks do? He presents another special report, recanting his previous statements yet again by stating that he was joking like Joan Rivers. Some people are going to say that Joan Rivers was killed because she joked around a month ago saying that Obama was gay and that uh, Michelle Obama was a tranny. You know Michelle is a tranny. I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Uh, we joked around about that as well. The mainstream media uh, picked it up as if we were being serious. Uh, but I don't think she was killed by the Obama administration by doing that. As you can clearly see, Bill Hicks was not joking. He was very serious. But things got very serious for him when he was contacted by his CIA handlers and ordered to completely recant his previous statements. And this is controlled opposition. Here you go, America. You are free to do as we tell you. You are free to do as we tell you. Bill Hicks was not just a great comedian. He was well informed about what was going on in our society. But instead of just revealing the truth to the people, he made jokes about it. His comedy included the government poisoning our children, abortion, the ignorance of society, people believing that everything is okay, and that there is a power elite of people who own, run, and control everything.
it is important to note that it is impossible for someone like Bill Hicks to fake their death without government involvement, as this would be necessary in order to falsify death records. This fact was the clue that led us to realize that there was a direct CIA involvement, as they must know that Bill Hicks assumed the identity of Alex Jones. Otherwise, they wouldn't be very intelligent, now would they? Apparently, Bill Hicks is not very careful with his words. It is the blatant lies, partial truths, and things that he refuses to speak about on InfoWars that have led many people to discover that he is not who he says he is. In our case, it was when he completely recanted his previous statements regarding Michelle Obama's true gender that encouraged us to take a closer look into the InfoWars deception. Every time I look at Michelle or Michael Obama, uh, the first lady or the first tranny, every time I look at them, something doesn't look right. She doesn't look like any black woman or any woman I've ever known. She's got shoulders that are wider than a man's, which physiologically doesn't happen. I want you to realize I'm not making this stuff up. In fact, I shouldn't even quasi-joke around about Michelle being a tranny. That was wrong. And not that they even attacked me for it. The end justifies the means. I just get real cynical in a bad mood sometimes and make sick jokes out of things. Some people are going to say that Joan Rivers was killed because she joked around a month ago saying that Obama was gay and that uh, Michelle Obama was a tranny. You know Michelle is a tranny. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh uh, we joked around about that as well. The mainstream media uh, picked it up as if we were being serious. There are many people around the world who have caught on to the fact that InfoWars is a controlled opposition front for the One World Government. The One World Government's plans are in full swing and are rapidly moving forward. Through the mainstream media and controlled oppositions, they are working desperately to keep the public distracted as their plans are unfolding. And what they have planned for you, the viewer of this video, is laid out in its entirety at testimonyofthetwowitnesses.com. But you had better fasten your seatbelt, because the truth can be quite surprising to hear. I am really Bill Hicks, yes. I am the son of Obama, Bill Hicks. Folks, I am, I, I, I am Bill Hicks. I am Bill Hicks, come on.